I started at Moulin Yards as the marketing manager and since there was a new investor on board, uh, which are Mr. and Mrs. Baxter from uh, Australia, they um, said we need different management and uh, because the company uh, needs to grow and uh, they definitely wanted a woman uh, in this position and uh, well we came to speak and he asked me the question can you run the company and I said I think I can and, uh, and there I was so uh, one and a half year ago I was appointed uh, managing director. As a managing director it is different and uh, so I had to read a lot and speak to a lot of people and then I started uh, the change uh, which is that I want all the people that built the yard this is my team and there is no difference in whether you are a managing director or you uh, work in the kitchen to, uh, to uh, set the meals uh, for the workers in the uh, afternoon. All people are needed to build that yard and to make that dream for the owner come true and this is very um, important. So this is where I focus on, to build that team. What I think is that uh, a woman in charge of a company where is male dominated, um, I think it brings a new vibe and uh, also uh, women look at things differently and conversations are different because maybe the approach a woman has is it might look a bit softer and uh, I'm not a softy and I'm not a soft manager but I'm probably more um, approachable so I do things differently. I joined Winch Design five years ago as their CEO and previously I was in a sort of parallel universe of uh, the art world. Uh, so also working with a lot of creative people um, and I have a real interest in leading uh, creative businesses. So I've really enjoyed the yacht industry um, and also architecture and aviation and it's been really great leading this team. When it's a, a client we know, we may have done a residential project for them, an airplane or another yacht, and they will quite naturally come back to us for a new project. Um, in other cases, just we might meet them here in Monaco and we get a conversation starting. Once there's a relationship and trust and a rapport, then it just comes very naturally. In other cases, they will maybe come to a broker first or they have a relationship with the shipyard. Either way, I think those are three very important relationships that the client needs to, um, to, to find and be comfortable with. And uh, once they've done their research and they're happy with the team, then we can get started with the, the fun and enjoyable journey, which is designing and building a yacht. In our company, uh, there are so many women. Over half of the senior leadership team are women. I don't actually think about it at all, uh, but there is a nice connection between women and yachting. The last couple of years at, uh, at Almos and, and Diamond Yachting have been very busy uh, indeed, um, although I think for everyone, Last year, 2020, was a, was a strange year where at, at some point you know, it was quiet and then I think after the summer last year the market uh, um, took off again. But we have about 20 projects uh, currently under construction and, it, and it's been sort of at that level in the last couple of years. In recent years we delivered our first two uh, purpose-built expedition yards, the two sea explorers, Anava and Vladacha, so that was a yeah, important uh, milestone to us. But um, we also have many exciting projects coming up. For example, next spring we are launching the first Amos 60 and uh, that that's, will be a, an important milestone also for us as we delivered last year the last and 25th hull of the Amos 180 uh, range. I think women in yachting or even, you know, bigger topic women in the maritime industry, uh, you know, a lot of talk about it and, you know, very often it's about how difficult it is to, to find good women or to make sure that they, uh, that they, that they progress. On the other hand, um, yeah, at Diamond Yachting our management team is 50-50, is so six of us, uh, three women, three men. Um, for me personally, what is very important and um, really important for the business, I think, is that we work in diverse team, that diverse teams, and that's of course gen, yeah, diversity in terms of gender, but also diversity in terms of age, experience, uh, professional background, uh, nationality. 
and I think diverse teams can really lead to, uh, to better decision making yeah, in, in the company and that's really why we, uh, why we try to uh, not just focus on individuals when we have a vac vacancy but really focus, okay, this is the team, um, if we need to add an additional member, what are we looking for, who's going to make the team uh, stronger. It's bigger than, than, than just gender, but of course, I think if you look at the numbers, there's definitely still a gap um, also in terms of, uh, of, 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 of gender diversity. I'm Eva Orsi, I'm the president of Tancar, entered in 2018, and I just control a bit of everything and look through the um, general financial part of Tancar. We consider Tankar as being a boutique shipyard, so we are quite small and uh, things are going well. We are growing, but we don't want to grow that much because it's important for us to be in straight contact with the client, with the owners of ships, and uh, that's the most important thing. So looking to the future, we do, maybe expansion is important, but keeping control of everything without expanding too much, without losing control of the situation. It's a um, family-owned business and I grew up with my father owning ships, yachts, and so every summer, every time we were on holiday with him, so I grew in this world and I always loved it. Then he started owning uh, shipyards from before Belletto, then he sold it and made Tankoa, created Tankoa, so it was always my point um, to reach and uh, always outside of it until I managed to get into it. I think people should not change uh, because uh, we should not speak differently because I am a woman and you are a man. But it is, uh, uh, I think, the way communication uh, is done is probably different and maybe less hard and uh, more open. Because it's easily overlooked that, that, for instance, first of all, a ship is a female, you know, beast. So it's very. Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't understand why you would only do that with a male-dominated environment. It gives such different ideas and suggestions on uh, both the exterior and the, uh, and the interior. Um, granted, we could use much more you know, variations in cultures and, and, and males, females, but at least we, we got a pretty good balance currently. Yeah. But also it's always, as creative directors, also very interesting to see within a team the interaction between the, 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 the women and the men is like, it's, it's, it's good. Yeah. It complements, it complements. Yeah. There are many different kinds of jobs in the yachting industry. So there's a lot of places for women too. Women are taking more important positions before it wasn't in that way. And um, just the future, getting stronger and uh, maybe easier to reach where you want to be. I call myself a relation manager and having good relations with all your suppliers like the designers but also all the subcontractors, male dominated, I think it is, is good when I'm open and uh, the female touch is easy and uh, it's maybe sometimes for them also a bit like okay now I'm speaking to a woman where they are used to speak to a male and uh, probably a bit more direct. But um, yeah, I think it is, it is very good that uh, yeah, the woman thing is good, the female power is good. Yeah, so I think on the one hand, um, of course, it's in, important to get, uh, um, yeah, to get more women enthusiastic for the yeah, for maritime uh, industry already at an early age. Um, on the other hand, I also think, you know, um, if you're if you're young and if you're smart and if you have the right character, then you know there's always a lot of weight put on what kind of uh, yeah education someone's had. But I think you know that at that age, sort of you know 21, 22, people are still young enough to to learn. And if I look back and I'm I'm almost 37, um, then you know so much from what. What I have learned was not in school actually, but it's been on the job. So then, yeah, those few years of education where you, yeah, where you specialize, I think you know we should focus a lot more on the on the people and the personalities. And then we also have responsibility. If we really want diversity in our companies, we have responsibility to teach them what we think is important on the job. Mm -hmm.